Hi loves, welcome back to my channel and to today's video that is my monthly wrap up for the month of April. I have my fan here because it is ridiculously hot and I'm not trying to be a sweating mess in this video so yeah let's jump right to it. So this video is the monthly wrap up for the month of April. I will tell you guys every single thing I read this month. April is a reading month I look back upon with Funness because as much as I didn't read as much books, I didn't really have any book this month that I didn't enjoy Right, so even the ones where it was like I didn't absolutely love it Which is a word I think I would be saying <laughs> a lot in this video because it turns out that I lack vocabulary to you know express myself in my excitement be it a negative or positive excitement which is something i have to work on but you know i probably would be saying absolutely loved a lot of times in this video bear with that you guys it just means that i liked the book so much and i have no idea how else to tell you guys that i liked it but for the books that i didn't absolutely love it wasn't like there was a huge disappointment or anything it was just like oh this is uh i want to start it and so i described this and i was just like oh this is a three star and three stars are not bad let's jump right to it so following formats from my previous wrap-ups i would first tell you guys about my rereads and then go on to the new books i read this month so the first book I will be telling you guys about this actually the only book I reread this month and this one was even like a carryover from March so I still rereading it at the ending of March and then carried it into April and that is Marine Winterborn by Lisa Playpass. It is the second book in the Ravenel series and it follows Helene and Winterborn, Mr. Winterborn, Mr. Ray's Winterborn and in book one they are promised to each other to be engaged and then they're is like this misunderstanding and their engagement is annulled in the first book right so just before the first book and then their engagement is annulled um, so the second book begins and in the second book they are the main focus they are the main characters in the second book and um, the book starts off with Helen going over to visit um, Reese in his office slash home slash you know where he's staying basically to tell him that she doesn't want the engagement to be annulled especially because it was you know it got to that point because of like the misunderstanding that helen didn't bear any romantic affections of any sort for reese and you know the time this is set in this is a historical romance the period time it is set in so for a girl to or for a lady to visit a man on chaperone was quite you know a scandalous thing and quite a very brave move on Helen's part and so what I really loved about this book is simply just the dynamic between Helen and Reese. The Reese has this like should I say dominant air around him this overbearing overpowering character if I should say and Helen is more soft-spoken gentle and you know but still has the ability to take a stand for herself and you know speak out for what she wants which was one of the things that attributed to her uh, making that very bold move she did make in the beginning of book two by going to you know Reese to plead her case if you want to call it that it sounds weird to say plead her case but you know that's what's coming to mind right now I'm just going off of the words in my head and so um I love the dynamic between them. I love that Reese was able to, you know, notice um, Helen's character as a character that was this way and was able to know that just because, you know, his opinions, his thoughts, his wants, he had the ability to project them more and make it seem as if he needed them more. The way he was just able to recognize Helen's character and, you know, help himself be should i say compatible with that and just make them work together in terms of their character was so nice to see especially in that beginning part when it came to like the whole negotiation part of things that went on that was really just very nice to witness and i also love this especially more especially because of helen's character like i like how soft-spoken and gentle she was soft-spoken 
gentle female characters and my favorite characters in fiction and i feel like nowadays um, we are getting a lot more of the badass the loud ones the ones that are ready to take a stand any single time it is needed you know and that's fine and good those are wonderful characters as well but i just find that my favorite type of characters to read about are not being written about as often or i am not seeing them as much as i would like to see them right so i absolutely loved her telling's character in this and i just really love the relationship between her and Reese. i just like how they work together so well how their you know personalities mixed and match to give us the wonderful chemistry that we got in marrying winterborn right so yes moving on to the new books i picked up first one i will tell you guys about is ugly love by colin hoover and going into this i had high expectations i expected a lot of intensity in the romantic relationship or maybe in the longing between the two main characters and this expectation came solely from all the instagram reels i had watched or i had seen or i had come across on my instagram on my explore page on my timeline all those kind of things because you know there are all these reels, reels that are like um sentences that would break you books that would break you and stuff like that and i was just seeing ugly love everywhere ugly love everywhere and so i had this great expectation so i was expecting like a whole lot of angst a whole lot of longing in this a whole lot of intensity basically and i went in and i didn't get that intensity so this book i i liked right i have no major complaints about it except for the fact that i couldn't bring myself to fully sympathize with um, miles as a character and now this is more from my personal convictions or my personal beliefs than uh the story as a whole right so ugly love basically follows miles and tate miles is the guy <laughs> and tate is this girl she is moving into her brother's apartment to stay with him for some reason i cannot remember and on the night she's moving in she meets a drunk man um in front of her brother's door he's passed out drunk and it turns out that that is miles one of her brother's closest friends and you know they just have these encounters these situations and they feel this connection between them miles has this thing where it's like he has he has this thing in his past where it's like he doesn't want to love again because he doesn't want to be hurt to that extent again but they both cannot deny this thing they have for each other and so they decide to enter a sort of friends with benefit relationship so miles is at this point where he's like even though he wants to love somebody because of what he kind of went through he doesn't think he's ready for that and tate is just a girl that is trying to uncomplicate the complication that is Miles so she can love him as much as she wants and that's basically what ugly love is about however I couldn't bring myself to sympathize with Miles as much so the big reveal came with we were eventually told what made Miles the way he is and you know we we're eventually told why he is shying away from all possibility possibilities of a serious romantic relationship and i couldn't sympathize with him because i just didn't really like the way he treated tate in this so i've seen some people say that what miles did to tate in this book emotionally is equivalent to what Ryle did to lily in it ends with us and as much as i understand the sentiment i don't fully agree right so i i just feel like it's not up to par right there is a difference the point the point that statement is trying to make is kind of right but i just feel like it's not right to say that what miles did to tati is the same thing what he did wasn't nice like i hated it so much i i literally was mad at him so like that was why i couldn't bring myself to feel bad for him because i am a person that is like don't turn your wounds or your trauma into weapons to hurt others like if you have been hurt you should be able to understand that what you went through wasn't nice and you shouldn't want to make another person another person feel that way so that's really why i wasn't a fan of miles however one thing i loved the most about this book was the closure scene we got so i feel like 
Colin Hoover so far is the best at giving us closure. I have actually read only two of her books, It Ends With Us and this one. And her closure scenes are so good. You know when I mean closure, I mean confronting the big issue that is or the big conflict that the whole book is basically revolving around and you know bringing it to rest if that makes any sense so you'll be reading the books and you'll be like so what's the point of this whole story if this is how it's going to end and then this whole scene comes up where the main characters address these issues and address why it had to be that way or why it was that way do you understand that kind of thing so i absolutely loved it when that closure scene came out that was a scene that brought me to tears in this book and not any of the scenes i was seeing on instagram reels honestly the scene where miles went back to face his past and try to be at peace with it so he can move forward that was my favorite scene in this book absolutely loved it i shed quite a number of tears reading that whole thing so yes that is right so the next book i would be telling you guys about is along for the ride by nini grace and this one follows jason and jolene so at the beginning of this book jason and jolene don't really like each other um for a very understandable very reasonable reason so it's not like they hate each other because of they have to hate each other so yeah because uh, that's a very big pet peeve of mine when you say it's, it's a hate to love it's an enemy to lovers and they are enemies for no reason they hate each other for no reason i hate it right so this one they did have a very understandable reason in the fact that when they first met they you know were cordial with each other given the fact that they were the um chief bridesmaid and best man of Jolene's elder sister's wedding where Jason happens to be Jolene's elder sister's groom's best friend and so he was the best man and so they were cordial till you know a situation occurred and the circle did not like each other so what this book is about is the fact that now not liking each other they have to go on this road trip together because they are helping Jolene's elder sister and her husband move across town so they are taking the moving truck while Jolene's sister and her husband would take their car with the rest of the furniture and at first Jolene was supposed to go with um her dad but then something came up her dad basically got like an offer for a vacation a very irresistible offer and obviously who would pass that up to go on a road trip moving furniture i don't think <laughs> i've met any such person so he could not make it and so they had to call jason and so they go on this road trip together they realize that they have this tension more of like a sexual tension between them and all that um it takes them a while in the book they don't act on it immediately which was fun to see but then they act on it and then they come back from this road trip and just you know go about their daily lives as if well not as if nothing ever happened but they just treated it as satisfying their curiosities if i should say and so they came back from the trip they go back to their normal lives but they decide that they cannot you know stop thinking about each other if that makes any sense and they decide to enter the friends of benefit relationship right so that's basically the premise of this book what i really didn't like about this one is the fact that you know the conflict the conflict we all wait for the conflict that is always being built up to in most romance books where it's like things are kind of going well for them but there just has to be this major conflict before they can have their happily ever after it was built up to so much in this book but when it happened i had to keep on rereading it again because i it felt so over underwhelming rather it felt so underwhelming it's it wasn't adding up right so the thing that happened that caused that situation to become the conflict made no sense to me and of course it didn't make any sense to me because it was when i went further that i realized that one of the characters misunderstood what was said by the other person and i was like what how do you misunderstand that kind of statement if that even makes any sense so yeah that was really disappointing what i actually really really loved about this book the most was the representation i saw in jason so um in this book the author never came out right and said 
Jason is an introvert or anything of the sort, right? So nothing like that was ever said, but it was implied. I believe it was implied given the fact that apart from Jolene's sister's husband, he had no other friends outside his work colleague and his um, his family basically right and so it goes to imply because uh, they also described him as the one that would sit out from like after work parties and all those kind of things and so the representation i'm talking about in this is seeing an introverted character being perceived as shy no being perceived as a snob rather than being perceived as shy it was this scene where um he was going to the break room and he overheard his colleagues talking about how what was the point of inviting him when he wasn't going to come because you know it was perceived like he was looking down on them and he felt like you know they were not worth his time or anything of the sort or something of the sort so yes that was really nice i actually actually loved to see it i mean it's like a good thing to want for others i literally just talked about not wanting others to be hurt because you were hurt but I mean, it's, it's, it's satisfying or it's not satisfying, but you guys should understand what I'm trying to say. It was nice to see. We all like to be represented in so many different ways, especially in fiction. And I absolutely loved it. The next one I will tell you guys about in this video is after you guys about three books. So the next one I will be telling you guys about is Opposite of Always by Justin A. Reynolds. And this one follows Jack King and Kate. So Jack is first of all my favorite thing about this book ever. Like Jack is the highlight of everything I loved in this book. I absolutely love Jack as a character. So we are first introduced to Jack as this high school junior about to enter senior year. And so you know how senior year involves like college applications and all those kind of things. So he's going on these college tours and all that. But before that, he's introduced to us as this guy with like so many ambitions who never gets there. So he, he's an almost guy, that's what he said. And he has this joke where he's like, he's the jack of all, but he's the king of none. So it was a, you know, very um, <laughs> mind catching introduction to Jack. But basically this book follows Jack and Kate. So he goes on this college tour thingy and he meets Kate. They have this instantaneous connection. Very wonderful to read. So lovely to read about. <laughs> Would not trade it. But I feel like that was like insta love at its best. That was the best you could have done for like falling in love at first sight kind of thing. And then they go on to have this wonderful relationship based a whole lot around cereal. And then Kate dies because, you know, Kate is introduced to us as this um, girl that is ill in a way that could immediately become terminal. And so she dies. But Jack keeps on getting these opportunities to go back in time and try to save her life. And every single take was a roller coaster of emotions, different emotions. It was just so, as much as it was sad sometimes, it was so nice to see how different decisions would affect the dynamics of different relationships or the dynamics of different things happening in your life, but may still lead to the same general outcome, right? So it was so nice. Um, I, I love this book for another reason that I don't really want to talk about because I just feel like uh, that's a bit of you know TMI on my part so yes I love this book so much also the constant mention of cereal in this made me crave cereal and it had me wanting to go to the supermarket and you know get every single box of cereal they made cereal sound like this very appetizing wonderful delicacy that anybody who is not having it is missing out in life but yeah it was nice it was nice i absolutely love this book jack's sense of humor the way kate was able to match it the way you know the dynamics or the dynamics of the relationships he had with like his childhood best friends or his squad his family everything in this book so nice so 
one so wholesome that's the word i use for the opposite of always wholesome that's the word for me so yes that is it the next one i will tell you guys about is the hardest fall by ella may and this one is so cute like i just think about it and i just think happy positive smooth sailing vibes i feel like um ella Mays is doing cliches so wonderfully like the cliches are being shied away from nowadays we can't deny that because now it's like nobody wants a cliche thing but they are so nice when they are done well right there is a reason they became cliches in the first place right so when they are being done well it is so freaking nice so this book is like a college sporty romance and it follows zoe and dylan so the book first starts so they have this awkward encounter where zoe is dead to um kiss dylan she has never met him before he is like a very famous football player in like their university and stuff like that and they have this encounter it's a, an encounter that remains in zoe's memory as embarrassing wish to erase from the mind of everybody around during that situation and for dylan it is a memory that is sort of remembered with fondness amusement and a little bit of shock right so yes um then a year later they also have another encounter that leads to dylan being zoe being nicknamed flash by dylan very cute and then the book actually starts off when these coincidences happen and they end up becoming flatmates or housemates so they are sharing a house and this book was so smooth sailing we just see different minor issues where they had to kind of depend on each other and you know just be there for each other in general as their feelings for each other kind of grew it was so smooth sailing till like the conflict there was never really any you know up and down there was never really the longing in this was just need very perfect for the vibe this book gave so is this sense where they kind of like realize they're feeling these things for each other but they are in they're still in like a friendly relationship and know what they kind of mean to each other that as much as you know that is something they are feeling and something they want to act on it's it would not take precedence over them being there for each other if that makes any sense right so just we they depended on each other a lot in this book and you know their personalities was a very nice mix mix as well in this book um the conflict in this was kind of annoying because it was really just a case of miscommunication in the sense that at this moment you could have just said this one thing and this whole thing could have been avoided but you didn't say it and then we now had this whole chapters of, of rubbish <laughs> in my opinion but yes other than that i love this book this book was just so sweet so smooth sailing you know had me blushing had me giggling loved their conversations yeah um zoe's awkwardness was also nice at first i thought it was a bit over the top but as we went on i just felt like it got better as it went so yes the last book on this list that i will tell you guys about is a cozy mystery and so if you have been following my videos for a while you know that i'm a romance girl forever will be a romance girl but this year is a year where i am trying my best to not remain in the comfort zone of romance i have created for myself because i just feel like fiction has a lot more to offer me and so this has to be like my first cozy romance, <laughs> my first mystery book since I started paying attention to the genres of what I was reading and the book is Mother of Sage by L.B. Hathaway so it is the first book in the Posey Parker mysteries so Posey Parker is the main character of this book and she is a private detective and so this book starts off when Rufus who is or who was her brother's closest friend they both served in the military together her brother died and so we first survived and so they kind of like keep in contact as a sort of way to honor her brother's memory and that kind of thing and so um 
she is called to this um, hotel kind of place by Rufus and he informs her that his fiancée has disappeared and not only has she disappeared, she has disappeared with the family heirloom that has quite a compelling backstory behind, that has quite a compelling story behind it and at that same site it turns out that a man had been killed i think beheaded and so while he's in the midst of telling rosie about how not only has the girl he loves so much disappeared with his family heirloom he also failed to insure the diamond and so there is no way he can get compensation for it and his father is going to kill him and so he needs her help as a private detective to find her the police comes in to arrest Rufus as an accomplice to the murder because it turns out that the fiance that has suddenly disappeared is the culprit of that murder and has been on the police wanted list for a very long time and so Posey is now finding herself, you know, in the midst of this whole mystery of finding out the motive for the murder and finding out, you know, the whereabouts of the diamond or the family heirloom. And so it's, it was very interesting for me. I absolutely loved it. Like, I was just up in, you know, curiosity throughout this book. It was so nice to always try and be guessing even though i was so bad at it i don't even want to talk about it right um i i just really loved every single thing about this book rosie's character i say rosie Rosie's character was a nice character i listened to this as an audiobook and i feel like i've said before um on my instagram stories anyway but i feel like listening to audiobooks make the reading experience a lot more better i just feel like i mean it's the experience i have experienced and most times when i listen to the audiobooks it is always just an elevated experience for me right so i absolutely love this i love posy as a character her you know wit and sharp thinking also this this book kind of made me feel so dumb because i guess that most of the clues where they'll be like oh my god wait a minute this is that 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 <laughs> um were kind of technical things but i just felt so dumb because like i said i was trying to guess as well but then somebody will point out this thing that kind of just connected with this and i'm like oh my god no this is the story i've been listening do you understand that kind of thing like how did i miss this that kind of thing it was so fun reading this so fun um the villain introduced to and introduced to us at the end of this book like the whole mastermind behind the murder and the you know theft of the diamond and all that a very 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 interesting character like i love the amount of depth that was given to the character even though we met this character about like probably let's say two hours into the ending of this book so we had two hours left till the book finished and then this character it was an interesting enough villain and you know his motives although it it was very cliche kind of was so nice to read i really had no complaints about this book when i first finished this book i you know considered giving it a five star i still haven't rated it i feel like if i'm going to rate it i'm going to give it a five star because i believe that i could not have been introduced to the world of mysteries any better than Mother of Stage by L.B. Hathaway. So yes, that is it for my wrap up for April. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. Tell me what book you are currently reading right now. Um, and if you liked this video, please leave a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe before you leave. I will see you in my next video. Bye.